So I'm Steve Minot. Uh, so I'm STM UK on GitHub, where I've been helping a bit with the Perl 6 uh, Rakudo star distribution, which is intended to be uh, for people just to download. It's got batteries in it, so it's got a load of modules that are quite useful. So if you want to get started with Perl 6, I'd recommend downloading Rakudo star. There's also binary versions available for Mac and Windows. Uh, yeah, so the sl uh, as the title suggests, this is a light-hearted comparison of Perl 5 and Perl 6 benchmarks. It's hopefully not too misleading. I've been lying a bit about lying. Generally, I'm going to be quite truthful, but mo that's mostly anyway. And when I try and catch you out, I'll make it fairly obvious. Uh, code samples at GitHub, uh, and that'll be on the last slide as well. So basically, the title of the talk was inspired by this <coughs> book here, which was How to Lie with statistics, and I've crossed out statistics and put benchmarks there. So that's a classic one from the 60s. Uh, and the quote at the beginning of it says, there are three kinds of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. And that's either uh, Disraeli or Mark Twain, or whoever, whatever, which is why I've put the star in, which is a Pearl Six-ism. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I guess that also shows that uh, dodgy uh, attri att attributions of quotations aren't new to the internet. They've been around for ages. So, yeah, I mean, the obvious thing is there are three kinds of benchmarks. Benchmarks, damned benchmarks, and lies, or whatever. Okay, so seriously, it's interesting doing common programming tasks, like creating objects and adding numbers. And it's also quite useful if you're not familiar with Perl 6 because it shows, I, I'm going to show you code examples of 5 and 6 next to each other. I've tried to make the code look as similar as possible in most cases. I've tried to avoid tweaking, so I, I'm not getting into a benchmark arms race. Generally, the code is the same. Sometimes, if there's an obvious thing, I, I will drop it in. Sorry? Yeah. So, yeah, don't take the results too seriously. It's really intended as a bit of fun. I'm not sort of attacking Pearl, Pearl 5 or anything. And really, this is a spoiler, I guess. Uh, it won't be a surprise to, to, that to most people that Pearl 5 is still faster than Pearl 6 for most things right now. But, of course, that may change. So, which Pearl 6 uh, VM bench uh, backend? So the mainstream one is more VM. Uh, most of the optimization work has been done using more VM, and, and that's generally the one I'm going to use. But there's also a backend which is based on Java, which is a JVM, uh, and I've included one benchmark, but really for most things the Java one it, it is noticeably slower. There's a J JavaScript backend coming soon, but, but I haven't built that yet, so I can't really comment on it. So, yeah, so what, what am I actually comparing? So I'm comparing Perl 6 as built on stable Debian uh, as of last week. It's about just before the August release of Perl 6, but so it's probably fairly close to, the, to that version. And I'm comparing it with the last stable release uh, of Perl 5. So I ran it on a lightly loaded server in, in scare quotes. So that's, in fact, the desktop, which is behind my sofa. But I, I wanted to use a desktop because, uh, you know, a, a, sorry, a server rather than a desktop because a desktop, I'm, you know, I'm running music programs and web browsers, and, and that wouldn't be a very good benchmark. I've not used any use of parallelism either. So, I mean, the obvious thing with uh, Perl 6 would be to use the concurrency that's built in. I have done another talk on that, which hopefully will appear on YouTube soon. So, yeah, benchmarking. So it started off, and I was looking for a simple program to execute a target program just with a number of arguments, uh, you know, a number of times to run, uh, to print out the total time and the average time. So I was a bit surprised that I couldn't actually find a simple program to do that. So what I did was I asked Sue over there to write it for me. <laughs> and it's in her talk on Thursday. So that, this is a blatant plug for her talk. <laughs> Okay, so the first task was objects. Everyone uses objects, and I thought I'd create one million objects. So I used Moose. Uh, I could have used other 
OO frameworks. I could have used less data structures directly. I could have used Moo, Mouse, or Meow, or whatever the latest flavor of the month is, but I, I've used Moo. So it's quite interesting comparing the two fragments of code. Uh, I think the one on the right does look cleaner, probably because OO is built into Perl 6 to a degree that isn't in Perl 5. And you can see that it translates pretty much line to line. And Moose resembles Perl 6 OO. So I ran, ran that and got these timing results. So essentially, Perl 6 is roughly 10 times faster to produce a, a million objects. I've also put here an example of how I used the JVM to do the same task. Obviously, there's a problem with the, the, problem with the JVM which is that the startup is quite slow. So, so the best way of doing benchmarking is, is to run a persistent uh, server and then have a client that, s that, that sends the programs to be benchmarked. So, so, it, it, so, you don't, so I don't get the startup hit each time. Uh, and I, when I did that, uh, the Java version was about, like, about half the speed of the Moore VM. That was in fact quite a favorable benchmark for the Java uh, when I tried the Java with the benchmarks that are, that are coming, it, it usually did a lot worse. So I, I really stopped using it at that point. Okay, so what I showed you, that Moose, there was one very obvious thing uh, that could have been optimized in Moose. Does anyone know what it is, by the way? I'll just go back. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the reason it's so slow is because this line is missing here, and most people, would, if, the, if they were doing this sort of task in Moose, would, would, would add that line. And w when I add that line, it's about the same speed as Perl 6. Okay, so we created a lot of objects, so now let's add a lot of integers up. Uh, this actually came from a, a friend gave me a, a Ruby code which basically did this and the Ruby code ran faster than Perl 5 and I was investigating it and also the thing I noticed was that the Ruby version didn't give the same result as Perl 5. So I ported it to Perl 6 and Perl 6 does give me the same result as Perl 5. So my guess is that Ruby is probably giving the wrong answer uh, and I think what my suspicion is, I'm not a Ruby expert but I had a look but I think it, uh, it, 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 it upgrades data types seamlessly while it's running. So I suspect that, it's, it's got confu that the Ruby version got confused that way. Although, I'd be, you know, if anybody's a Ruby expert and wants to have a look at this, I'd be interested to know if that's the reason. Okay, so this program is quite interesting. So this is a Perl program that works under both 5 and 6. It's a polyglot program. So I went to the Perl 6 channel and, thought, and asked if anybody had any suggestions for a, a good name for, a, 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 for polygot, and they suggested Perlygot. So a Perlygot program runs under five and six. So the first time I ran it on Perl 5, I just got infinity. Because I, hadn't, I have to pass a uh, big int I I as a module in, in order for it to work. So when I did that, I got those results. Can everyone see that at the back? <laughs> I probably should have used scientific notation, to be honest. <laughs> okay, so the timing results are, again, that Perl 6 is about 10 times faster. And that's with the same code. Okay, I, d I did a talk on Mandelbrot, and I quite like Mandelbrot, so I d I've done a Mandelbrot here. The left-hand side, that's actually taken directly from Rosetta code, which in turn was ported from a Ruby version, I believe, on Rosetta. Uh, the, the one on the right I is a Perl 6 version of it. Again, you can see it, it's pretty much line by line the same. A uh, few things that are interesting is that there is actually method, an absolute method, on the real part of the complex number on, on, on the right. So, yeah, Perl 6 has complex numbers built in, whereas Perl 5, you have to use an external module. Uh, also, th you see that the, the loop has changed. So. We no, we no longer have a, a, a C-style for loop. It's just turned into loop. And, uh, oh yeah, the, the ternary operator at the bottom is doubled up. Uh, and al also the, the final, the, the colon ha has become uh, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, which I think is a lot clearer because it's very easy to miss single, single characters, I think. 
Okay, so timing results again show, shows that Perl 6 is a lot faster. And that's the actual, oh, you can't see that very well, but that's basically a Mandelbrot, which is just ASCII art. Okay, so that's not very interesting because it's black and white, so I thought I'd show a color Mandelbrot, a Mandelbread. Okay, from bread to pi and calculating pi, So this is another Perly got script, and this one doesn't show Perl 6 in a particularly favorable light, but I thought for balance I should, I should put this one in. So yeah, the, ti the timing result is it, it, it's very much slower on, on Perl 6. Al although w w when I started running this program a couple of years ago, it, it, it was took twice as long to run on Perl 6. So the Perl 6 execution time is halved over a couple of years, which is quite good. There is one little obvious optimization. I showed you an optimization for Moose, so I think I should be allowed to show you an optimization for Perl 6. So uh, I've put native integer types in there, and it runs a bit faster when I do that, but it, it's, it's not really significant. But that's the sort of thing that you could do with Perl 6 because of the typing that ho hopefully in the future would not mean faster code. I, I went off on a bit of a tangent here, so I decided to, so to use a vintage classic and to take the Perly got thing one, one step further, which is uh, using Perl 4. <laughs> so this is running under MS-DOS, <laughs> running under <laughs> DOSBox. And DOSBox is intended for game emulation. It's something like a 16 megahertz early 90s DOS machine. And the porting that, that I put in scare quotes just, of course, means removing my. <laughs> And the timing result, which of course you can't actually see, is well, uh, that there's, there's, there's a value of pi there, and it takes about one minute, 40 seconds. So at least we can say Perl 6 is faster than Perl 4 would have been on the hardware of the time. <laughs> okay, I've probably pushed the train analogy a bit too far here, but there's a, there's a sort of classic diesel on the right and the electric on the left, and that's supposed to represent, the, you know, the, the new train is Perl 6 and Perl 5. I wanted to find a picture of an older train pulling a newer train to get it up to speed, but that's the best I could do, because my next one, I've cheated a bit. So this is actually valid Perl 6 code, uh, but it's in this strange eval, and there is a, a, a line here which says Lang Perl 5 at the bottom. Now, that's not really important. This is actually Perl 6, but it's running under uh, inline Perl 5. So I run that, and yes, that's a lot faster than the pure Perl 6 one. So I, I guess the serious takeaway from that is that if you had a critical section that is very slow under Perl 6, you could always run it, use it embedded as Perl 5, and at some point in the future, remove the embedding. Okay, to get a bit more serious, so how have benchmarks improved? There's basically two sets of benchmarks that have been used for Perl 6. Tux has come into the IRC channel probably every day or two, uh, with his text comma separated values. So we've been watching how the benchmarks for that have been improving. And there's probably been quite a lot of optimization work done for that specific case. There's also, also a, a Perl 6 benchmark, which is available on GitHub. And that includes the pi that I showed you earlier. This, that's a much larger suite of, of, of benchmarks. So, yeah, so, so the release of Perl 6 happened at the end of 2015, and you can see there's been quite a good increase here. So there's a decline in the number of times that Tux's benchmarks take. But as, as I said, there's been optimization specifically for that case. So, yeah, this is probably a better, uh, th this is a more complete suite. So, again, uh, on, on the left, we have the release. And on the right, you can see that there has been a gradual Im improvement in performance throughout this year, and I, I would expect that to continue. Okay, so is Perl 6 really faster? Well, yes and no. As all these things, it depends on what you're doing, and probably really, no, not at the moment. So, yeah, it, it, but Perl 6, I mean, the optimization work's only been going on for a, a few months, whereas Perl 5 has had optimization optimization for a de you know, several decades, or a couple of decades. 
there are some technical reasons. It, probably these are too small, but the, the, the second line is, is referring to the just-in-time compiler. So, so th that's something that Perl 5 doesn't have and that Perl 6 has that should mean in the future that the performance will be better. Uh, also, there's pre-compiled bytecode in, in Perl 6. Uh, I would actually encourage you too that there's a very good blog here, which is Perl6.party. So it's got one of those trendy new top-level domains, which is Offix's blog. And he's actually got a, s a similar one to this with diff a similar blog post to this talk, and it's got some different benchmarks. And it's his title is Perl6 is slower than my fat mama. So it's, as I said, it's getting faster with every monthly release, but it does need more help. Obviously, the people are working on it are just volunteers, and I would encourage people, if they are interested in getting involved, to come onto the IRC channel, which is very friendly on Freenode, Perl 6. Uh, and yeah, and, and, and the benchmarks are available uh, at, the, at my GitHub link, and that's, that's basically it. Has, has anyone got any questions? <laughs> I was hoping no one understood that. <laughs> well, it, it, it then became the basis of a whole sequence of other things. So. I mean, I, I think the AT, APT was successful, really. But anyway, that's probably a train spottery point, actually. <laughs> Yeah, I probably should have also mentioned that accessing uh, external C libraries is a lot easier in Perl 6 using native code than it is using access under Perl 5. So you could write it in C. Yeah. Yes, you're, you're quite right. I, I did try running it multiple times. I was hoping because there's a hotspot compiler thing, but may, maybe I didn't run it enough, but it didn't seem to kick it. You, you think several thousand times, might have. Oh, right, okay. So I was, I was nowhere near. I, I, I think I ran it, I was fairly impatient, ran it a few hundred times, hoping to see that speed up. But yeah, I mean, Sun has, or, or Oracle now has spent a lot of time o on this. And I, 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 was, I, would, I would expect to see speed ups with repeated running. I, I guess, is that a, a configurable option where I could put... Yeah, uh, yeah it, 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 that, that's probably worth investigating. But the, the JVM uh, port, it, it's fairly, it, it's not as mature as, as the more VM one, but... Yeah, I would, I would expect a lot of the Sun optimization or Oracle optimizations to be usable. Okay, I think that's it.